Hi, I'm Bob Morris, University of Nevada Cooperative Extension, here at our research and demonstration orchard in North Las Vegas. I wanted to mention a little bit, just a few minutes, on grapes and grape pruning. Behind me here are table grapes, uh, and I'm going to move over here shortly and show you some wine grapes. But on table grapes, these haven't been pruned yet. Our wine grapes have, so I want to show you the difference and talk a little bit about the difference in how we're pruning those grapes. So you notice here last year's growth, this is all last year's growth on these particular canes. Uh, and we're going to go back through and cut these down probably this next weekend on Saturday. So let's walk over now to the wine grapes. This is Italia wine grape. Well, it's a combination uh, fresh uh, eating as well as a wine grape. And I want to walk down here and show you after our pruning's been done. These have been what we call spur pruned. Let's walk down here because I think you'll see these spurs a little bit easier than you will down in that particular area. So when we're talking about spur pruning, we need to balance the fruit load with the canopy. So what we've done is removed a lot of the canes and we've spaced. These are the spurs. These are basically last year's growth that have been cut back. And we don't do our cutting here in the orchard. It's the last thing that we do here when we're pruning in the orchard. We don't do that uh, pruning in the orchard till pretty much close to March. We're right now in the latter part of February and March, and uh, we're getting these ready to produce fruit this coming year. So here is a spur, here is a spur, here is a spur, all the way down. This is last year's growth here, and we're balancing it so that we don't get an excessive number of berries on here that dilutes the flavor and the sugar content. So we're going to space these spurs about 8 to 10, maybe even 12 inches apart. And we're going to reduce these canes, now spurs, down to only about two buds. And uh, to two buds, and when we're counting the buds, for instance, let's look right uh, here. If we look at this spur, and we count the number of buds, we're going to count buds that are on the spur itself. If a bud, and you can't see it, but there's one back here, and it's on the cordon back here, we don't count that bud. But we're going to count up two buds, and then we're going to make a pruning cut above that second bud, about a quarter of an inch above it. So we'll take the pruning shears, make that cut, there. Now these were cut earlier. I like to, to wait until the very last minute to make our pruning cuts here in the northwest because of our cold, drying northwest winds that we have coming through. And we do run a risk of losing these spurs. Let's go ahead and count these buds again. Down here there are buds. You can see the whites down here. Don't count those. That's on old wood. We'll come up here to uh, newer wood. There's one right here. There's one right here. We're going to make that cut right there just leaving two buds. Coming on down now, here, let's look at this particular spur. If we look here, we've got one here. It is borderline. I'm just going to wipe that out. It's no longer there. Here's one. Here's two. I'm going to make that cut just above that one, and that will help to reduce the amount of berries that we have on this, on this uh, load, on this, uh, uh, on this cane, or on this uh, cordon, so that we'll get uh, fewer berries, but the concentration and the flavor is going to be higher. We'll work all the way down this entire, uh, this entire uh, planting here and do that to all of those spurs.